tutorial starts with a song, but it's only a few seconds long. Let's get started with animation. Hi folks, today we'll model a screw, nothing more and nothing less. You will say, I can model a better screw. Of course you can, but we do it in a minimal amount of time. There are several approaches to model a screw, and one is this one with the twist deformer. And I actually did a tutorial about the twist deformer quite a while ago. Uh, it involves picking many, many components, which takes time. And the other approach is the one I'm going to show you now. It's very fast and very effective. So if you have a job where you need to model eight screws which look, look slightly different and you only have two hours of time, this is the way to go. Enjoy! I'm on the polygon modeling and I start with an object which is sitting here. Right mouse click and it's called Helix. The helix is already some kind of screw. In the attribute editor under polyhelix1 I can increase the number of coils. For example like this. Maybe I won't need that but uh, I, I'd like to have it. A geometry which holds the whole system. Uh, and I use this, just a simple cylinder and I scale it down. I use a boolean operation. That's the first boolean operation I'm going to use here. I'm going to unify these two surfaces. Now they are one and I can delete the history. That's something which I like to do with such in such processes delete by type history because I want to start from the current view into the next one. Now if the screw needs to be thinner at the bottom than at the top. This is how I would go about it. I go to the deformers and I use a lattice deformer. When we use the option box, we don't need to use the option box but uh, we could and uh, we see the divisions in X, Y and Z. There are 2, 5 and 2. When I apply this I get um, a lattice which looks like this and in order to make it thinner at the bottom we just need to click here and reduce the T uh, divisions to 2, right mouse click, lattice point, so select the four lattice points down here and with a scale tool I just scale this object down, just like this. That's fine again, go back to object mode and select it and delete by type history again. Now the lattice deformer disappears and this is our final screw base. Now the next thing is the top of the screw. Very simple and again think about what kind of geometry you're starting off with. Right mouse click and here I choose the prism. Because the prism is a triangular uh, object but under poly prism I can change the number of sides from 3 to 6. Now I have this kind of object and I move it up and this is going to be the top of my screw. Again I select both of them, go to mesh, booleans and unify both of them and I delete the history. When I delete the history these objects, intermediate objects, will disappear. Edit, delete by type, history. So I just have one geometry which is pretty lean. If I want to bevel the top a little bit I go to the edges and I select for example this one, that one, that one, that one, that one and I go to Edit Mesh and I bevel. Now the bevel is a little bit harsh I reduce the fraction from 0 0.5 to 0 0.1. Very nice and of course you can do the same down here. Now we're finished with our screw and we go to rendering. 
typical thing to render this is you need a shader. Currently we're in a Lambert shader with a gray, unshiny color. So we assign a new material and we go for an Arnold standard surface shader. And here in the presets we have the brushed metal and you don't see this in the screen recording but uh, trust me it's there and I blend it by 90% so we have a little bit of our uh, dull Lambert shader and quite some glossiness. Now uh, when I light the whole thing with a sky dome light which wraps around the whole scene and I render this for example here in the Arnold view I get um, quite a dull looking screw. Why is that? Because it doesn't know what to reflect other than the white background. Now we change this and we change this by selecting the sky dome light and we're mapping the color with or to a surround image or any kind of Im image really. So we need to uh, select file here in the create render node menu and here we select our image. And I have lots of source images lying around somewhere on my hard drive. This is cell large. I don't know what I used it for. Now it wraps around the whole scene and Maya needs to think a bit until it creates a new rendering. We don't want to see the background so we select the light, the sky dome light and further down we see the visibility and we don't want to see it in the camera and now we need to deactivate it here as well so we don't see the light but it, the light has the effect and now you see the screw is getting much more interesting finally let me make a cut up here and um, all I do for this is I create polygon cube move it up make it much thinner and now I select both of them and go to booleans and I create a difference. Now this is always exciting what comes out of it and it depends on the selection sequence. So this was definitely the wrong sequence so I undo this and I select the screw first and then this polygon cube and I go to booleans and I create the difference again and now I have the screw with this indent up there. Keep in mind that all these things look in the rendering much better if you when you introduce a surface and I usually use a NURPS surface and you in addition could use another light for example an area light which you don't see because we deactivated the lights here. Deactivate normalize. The exposure can be two. Now we have a mixed light in the scene. Two light sources. And in normal life you have usually more than just two lights. And with this we're finished and I'll show you some renderings I did with a little bit of depth of field and nothing else really. Have a nice day. Bye bye. I like this music. If you don't like it, I don't care. This is computer animation.